It is time on this Friday for Friday Fabulous Florida, and that means Albert and I welcome in uh, fabulous producer, former fabulous producer, John Daly to the mix. Hi, John Daly. Hey, formerly fabulous. Well, you're still fabulous. You know you are. You've got the nice jacket on today. You're looking stylish. Well, I was thinking about that because we're going to be hosting a show next Tuesday. Do yeah. I do I go the Mark route and have like the jacket I wear every day? Yes. Or do I buy a bunch of hoodies and try to look like Zuckerberg? Mm, I think I'm going for the jacket. I like it. It's nice. Okay. I have to work out. You know, Winona Ryder um, lived in Petaluma. Yes, I think you know she that, did. right? But did you, you know and... we had the same English teacher at Kenilworth Junior High? What? Really? Yeah. She was bullied. So she was yeah. bullied so badly that she had to change schools a couple times and ended up going to um, acting school in San Francisco. But I wonder if her childhood kind of had an impact on the ro you know the roles and that she takes and what she's interested in. I, mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, yeah, you and I are yeah, dark... going to bring up the shoplifting. And it's that, well, she had like, a very dark a dark stuff, childhood. But... Yeah, and then yeah. the shoplifting thing. So yeah, I don't know. I think people, kids that are um, kind of forced by parents into acting, always seem to have. Well, she was very interested yeah. in acting. I know that. Yeah, but I That's think that's why she, she wanted she, to go to school in San Francisco. But she definitely had her parents pushing her. I mean, from a young age, I remember yeah. she was in Lucas, and she was—I mean, she was just a kid at that point. Yeah. So, um, but we are both from Petaluma, uh, John Daly and I. And again, we will be starting our show on Tuesday. We've reached the one thousand subscriber mark, and so the after party live <laughs> will commence. I will say that it uh, follows a time change. See if I can bring up the uh, maybe you can do it, Albert. The the time change graphic that we have. Yes. Yeah, so Nikki's show is moving. It will start at nine a.m. Pacific, which is great because Pacific because Nikki and I were uh, kind of morning drive on KGO. So yeah, you were reclaim that title uh, nine to eleven with the Nikki Maduro show. The Mark Thompson show shifts back an hour from eleven to one. And then the after party live, picking up that uh, vacant hour from one to two. So that changes on Tuesday, August 1st, if you're keeping track, if you like to be here live for those shows. And we should um, note, it's a big deal, but we wouldn't have gotten to 1,000 subscribers without this audience and the help of Mark Thompson, superstar. Yes. He's kind of a big deal. He is kind of a big deal. Uh, yes, uh, Mark and Nikki both. Ch -ch uh, huge thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark wouldn't want you to mention Nikki right now. Oh, that's true on this show. Sorry, Mark. Mark Thompson, it's all about you, Mark Thompson. We're so grateful. That's better. It's true. We'll work on that, uh, Kim. Well, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll have some more sincerity next time. Yeah. No, I really, I really though, am grateful because, uh, again, as John said, everyone in the, in the audience, we would not have reached 1,000 if it weren't for you. Okay, let us move on. I might on have to start my own show the, if I could uh, just write. I'll steal yours and then steal Mark's and then steal Nikki's, just in that order. What, do you, what would you call it? I have no idea. It'll how about, be. Uh, how about Albert? Thank you. Lo lowering the bar with. <laughs> C's get degrees. C's yeah, get exactly. degrees. Exactly. Lowering the bar. <laughs> well, let's jump right into Friday Fabulous Florida. It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. We will begin with, I don't know, I'm going to say, John Daly, this story really could have happened anywhere. This girl, 11-year-old, in Port Orange has been arrested after making a false report uh, using 911. It was uh, an abduction hoax. So she- This is I their new she, hoax. She's bored. She thinks this is gonna be funny. I don't know. But this girl texted police um, updates. She calls 911 saying her friend has been kidnapped by an armed man driving a white van on down uh, I-95 in Oak Hill. And then for the next hour and a half, she texts deputies updates, uh, explaining that she's following behind this van in a blue Jeep. And she's describing the supposed gunman. Oh, thank you. Look, food has been delivered to me. That's great. Can't eat it right now. Thank you. You get a new um, show and all of a sudden, really? I Guys, I'm kind of a big deal, apparently. I don't know. Um, so she's following behind the van in a blue Jeep. Do you deputies know who I am? I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> there you go. Uh, deputies respond 
and they're um they're responding from all over the place to this uh, alleged kidnapping right they're coming from edgewater new smyrna beach and port orange to search for this kidnapper though no vehicle was found eventually they get to this house in port orange after tracking this girl's cell phone and they talk to the girl's dad and they figure out she's been inside with her family the entire time (laughs) you imagine she's hanging out with her family like now i'm behind the van on i-95 now i'm behind the van yeah this is their uh, new hoax she got the idea she said you know they do this to me all the time i don't know what the hell they do it for she's she's she got the idea through a youtube challenge she says thinking it would be funny so there's video of and i um i think the police really handled this well they did have to arrest her but there's video of wait how police. old is she how old is she 11 years old and they arrested her wow they did they put her they put her in the cuffs and everything um they said nothing's going to happen that they're going to use this as a learning experience um but that it really might have helped uh hurt someone who legitimately needed their help so they weren't going to so they... tase her or step on her neck no they didn't do that no they didn't um yeah, so they they now have a, a series of community discussion platforms to talk about what kids are doing online. They have to set up like five meetings in uh, around this area. But she faces charges, this 11-year-old, of making a false report concerning the use of a firearm in a violent manner and misuse of 911. So they did take her to the Family Resource Center for processing before they took her to Juvenile Hall. Ooh, My bad. Processes. I'm sorry. Processes, uh-huh. protocols, and standards? Yeah. Can we play the video, Albert? Do we have the video? Um, I don't know. There's, there's a minor in it, so I don't know. Oh, sure. you don't want to? Because they yeah. blur out her face, but okay. So yeah, the, the sheriffs basically are just saying, yeah, you can't do this. And they kind of give her a stern talking to. So uh, that happened in Port Orange. The, Wait, so we'll Port it... Orange, is that like Mar-a-Lago? No, it's not. It's not like Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> Not at all. You, Not you the get same it. thing. You get it. Port Orange. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think there's documents at Port Orange either. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about this Florida man, this fine specimen of a fellow who was arrested for drunk dunking a woman's head into a vat of tar during an argument. This is something you don't see every day, I got to tell you. We've never seen anything like this. No. Sadly, the woman suffered chemical burns after this man dunked her head in a vat of a kind of a tar-like substance and uh, held her at gunpoint. She, uh, I guess this is all part of a domestic dispute, unfortunately, uh, police arrived. They found guns at a neighbor neighboring property, but she had. Chemical well, of course, burns. they're going to find guns at a neighboring property. It's Florida. Well, yeah, they do. I mean, doesn't everybody have a gun in Florida? <laughs> <sighs> Marshall Dimmick is his name. Fifty-five of Rosewood. He was arrested. Uh, pol- woman tells tells police she's tortured after she had an argument with uh, Dimmick, who is apparently a felon, and that he had dunked her head into a vat of tar during this incident and she ends up with uh what chemical burns the substance was used to treat clam and oyster bags is why they had it around and nearly sure sure i'm sure that's what he was using it for yeah so she's got chemical burns on her face her arms and uh he's under arrest mr dimmick it's, I mean, this is ho- completely horrible, but this sounds like the plot of, like, a Looney Tunes com- uh, cartoon, doesn't it? It's, it really yeah, does. it's like, you, uh, you know, like, Tom, uh, Tom is messing with Jerry type of thing. Yeah, like Jerry, or, like, a ba- or a Batman movie. Crazy. And we have to thank Jim Avila for sending us that one. I mean, wow. O- imagine oyster chemical goo all over you. Gross. Um, this Florida man who is 79, you'll be happy to know, has survived an alligator bite. Yes, he um, he was bitten by a nearly seven foot long alligator. That sounds well, so benign. What? An alligator, an alligator bite. What, like it sounds so nip, benign, doesn't it? Little, like, just a little nip. Like... No, um, he was, of course, and you hear this time and time again, out for a walk around his golf course community neighborhood with a little dog. 
always happens on the, on the yeah, golf little dog. Right now it's mating season, and they're hungry. Uh uh-uh. uh, no. Um, and wait, wait, let me guess. It was like five a.m. It was five a.m. It happened at the Forest Glen and Golf Course Community in Naples, Florida. Uh, the nine one one call from the man. Uh, shows that he tells an operator, I'm bleeding. I don't know how bad it is. There's a lot of skin ripped off. I can see probably some muscle. Go figure. Out for a walk to stay healthy. How How about stop walking your dogs at 5 a.m. around alligator-infested lakes? Like, I didn't even see the story. I didn't even see the story, and I knew it was 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm, I don't think he had a dog. I don't think, but he was Well, he doesn't have a dog anymore. No. no. (laughs) (laughs) So they send out this emergency helicopter to take him to be treated. Uh, they saw the gator heading to a nearby lake and they tracked it. Uh, they found the, the gator, uh, removed it from the community. And, and if you don't sheriff, have a dog, why are you walking at 5 a.m. in the morning and you're an alligator? And, You've got to get out there. That's not healthy. It. Walking around an alligator infested lake at 5 a.m. in the morning <laughs> is not healthy. Maybe it's healthy, but it's that. not smart. Uh, as someone who isn't smart as well, John. It's healthy Maybe until it's not healthy. <laughs> so... The uh, the sheriff's department wants everyone to know in Florida, uh, that's the U.S., that it is alligator mating season right now. Well, Jim knows that. And so you have to be very, very careful around bodies of water and vegetation while alligators nest. And it's true, John Daly, that they are most active, these alligators, between dusk and dawn hours. So plan accordingly to reduce the chances of running into them. Do they it was need wrong, to up... it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Do they need to put up signs or something? Maybe they can hand out, like, when you move to Florida, they give you, like, an instruction book, right? Like a Florida for dummies? <laughs> well, they have signs everywhere. And people still go. And people still, you know, walk around their communities. I don't, I don't think, you know, they you people expect to, that they will run into these creatures. So, um, okay, let's talk about this incident in Florida, where a man has been arrested after spraying a woman with a garden hose. Yeah, it happened. It happened in Flager County, Florida. They were having an argument, this man and woman. He didn't want her on his property. He said no. Jeffrey Rutfield, arrested on a charge of simple battery. Uh, This happened Friday night at a home on Treetop Circle. Sounds like such a nice place. You know where Treetop Circle is. Where, John? It's right down the street. Hmm. From the Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, Flagler County deputies were called to a home after a woman reported an unknown uh, woman had pointed a gun at her husband. The husband, identified as Rutfield, escalated the incident reportedly by spraying a garden hose in the woman's face after yelling at her. That really is the the role of the husband, right? To escalate? Es- escalating things. Yeah, uh, the he's, role of the husband. he uh, yeah, was yelling at her for allegedly being on his property line, and then followed her as she walked back to her car, yelling at her. She says she was in fear of being attacked, so she displayed a firearm for her safety. That's when he went back inside his house. She stayed outside in her car, waiting for deputies to arrive, saying she was never on his property, and that he had followed her. Uh, to her uh, deputy say she wasn't on his property and that he followed her to her car in an aggressive manner. So, yeah. The police say if you spray someone in the face with a garden hose, you only escalate the situation. It's much better to de-escalate and call us. Say Wait, hold on. Department. What he's got take going some... here is a situation. <laughs> I, got, I got to take some notes. Hold on. So don't spray people in the face. Don't de-escalate. With... Okay, Call the, the sheriff's host. department. Don't, right, okay. yeah, Got don't it. do that. Got it. Got it. I mean, she also brandished it a weapon too, so that kind of escalated it a more. But I, I, yeah. I think she got away with that. Well, Man. it's you know the husband has to stand down. I like to imagine um, he was telling her, "Go and get." I wish he just you know, <laughs> go it, you go and you nev- get. That's one of my it favorite would, words. Get. It would never never occur to me to spray someone with a garden hose. I mean, I mean, even if you, it was in my hand, it wouldn't. I just. Maybe if you owned a business in San Francisco. Then maybe. That's possible. You're right. Okay. This man in Florida, of course, he is rearrested one day after (laughs) he was released from prison, serving a nine-year prison sentence. He cut off his ankle monitor, and he was out. 
This man cut off his, allegedly, cut off his GPS ankle monitor and was found overdosed by deputies one day oh. after being released <laughs> <laughs> on probation from a nine and a half year prison sentence. His name is Albert Gardner. Albert? Oh, Albert. I Albert, know. thank you. <laughs> Not our Albert, no. Wait, and nobody noticed him walking out? Albert, thank you. I mean, I don't know how you don't notice He's that. He's like, oh, oh, it's my first day on the job. Excuse me. <laughs> he is released July 7th after being convicted of lewd and lascivious battery in 2014. He's also deemed a sexual predator. Oh, oh, yeah. big shock there. He's he looks like a carny. He looks like a carny. He looks like the worst possible scenario for a carny, like uh, at the Petaluma Fair. I'm going to agree the facial tattoos were a bad choice, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the only bad choice. <clears throat> Albert was arrested the next day, the very next day. Albert's fault today. Yeah. Booked Albert, on charges thank you. of violating probation and tampering with an electric monitoring device, and he was booked without bond. He was previously sentenced to five and a half years of supervised release, which ended uh, in January of 2029. So, yeah, he's pretty scary looking. I have to yeah, say. Yeah, he looks like he requires supervision, just as yeah. in a general sense. His um, ankle monitor was found pinging at a 7-Eleven. It's on always 7-Eleven. Always. <laughs> but yeah, he took it off at a 7-Eleven, but they couldn't find him at the 7-Eleven. But the ankle monitor was still recording data there. It was found in a trash can at the, uh, at the 7-Eleven gas station. And what do you want to bet he attacked an elderly man who was waiting in line at the 7-Eleven? That is not reported, but it might be possible. That's a different story. So they find him at this apartment complex uh, at, during a call invol involving an overdose. They find him overdosing at this apartment complex where Gardner's sister said her brother consumed an unknown narcotic and overdosed. He was found unconscious on top of a bed. They pull him to the ground. They start CPR. He survived after they gave him Narcan. He went to the hospital. Um, he had a seizure. He gets medical care, and then it's back to jail for him. So, sayonara, Albert. I like to think that the people that he just saw the day before in jail were like, oh, you finally made it out. You're out. <laughs> He's like, like, I've seen you somewhere. I can't really place it. Um, you look you're really back. familiar. <laughs> oh, I really think that his face tells the whole story in this yeah. situation. Man. Um, let's talk about this boat situation kind of cute pictures in this story oh, got a situation you got we do this is a dog that ends up being the captain of this boat a designated driver uh the dog had one paw on the steering wheel of a small motorboat in riverview florida as his owner kind of kicked back in the back of the boat with a beer letting the dog drive the boat I am the captain now. <laughs> and he's not doing a bad job either, I'll tell you. Um, the pet video has coasted to millions of views across TikTok with a lot of users calling the dog the designated driver. And I don't know how long this went on for. Obviously, the, the man is, you know, close enough to the wheel where he can take over if there's a yeah, problem. Yeah, but you know that dog is like, really? Again? Okay. <laughs> yeah, guys just hanging out in the back. Kind of a cute video. Well, the dog wants to have dinner, so he knows what's up. Yeah, that's really cute. Adorable. <laughs> so, yes, that in Florida, that's, a, that's the feel-good Florida story. And now we're on to the non-feel-good story. Uh -oh. Now, this Florida man, unfortunately, tries to open a, a patrol car, threatens to kill a man in custody. This happened in, at a Gainesville... Uh, an alleged shooting at a Gainesville convenience store that ends with a 7-Eleven? I doesn't say. Mm -hmm. No, Allegedly. It's, the come, it's, it's the come and go. Uh, oh, it's okay. called the come and go. Yeah. Uh, this man, a convict, convicted th uh, felon, threatened to kill another man already in police custody. It happened Monday night at the come and go. A 911 caller reported someone shooting at him at the store from a U-Haul van stopped at a nearby traffic light. Officers respond to the area, uh, stop this U-Haul, detain the driver, and put him in a patrol car without incident. That's when the 911 caller 
identified as Courtney Crosby, ran toward the patrol car and tried to open the door, allegedly yelling that he was going to kill the man inside. Wow. Officers intervene. They try to handcuff the 33-year-old man. He physically resists. Police detain him shortly thereafter and put him in a different patrol car. I was going to ask, did they put him in a different patrol car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's lots, Let's take care of this problem. Just, just throw him in there. Uh, it was revealed the driver of the U-Haul was at Bentley's Upscale nightclub when shots were fired. The driver wow. fled the area in a U-Haul van. The uh, video surveillance footage from the come and go shows that Crosby was leaving the store, allegedly firing a gun. The His car uh, sustained bullet holes and a firearm was found inside. It was revealed he was a convicted felon. Uh, yeah, so... People went to the hospital. The people were arrested, both of them. Uh, Crosby arrested had twice uh, in the past for cocaine and burglary. So he's no stranger to, to prison either. But yeah, that's kind of a convoluted story of uh, a one man in custody being threatened by another who quickly Ooh, also it's a wild idea. went into custody. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the U-Haul also is very random in that story. I don't know what the U-Haul was doing there during nightclub times, but, you know, it is a wild idea. Sometimes you got to stop off, you know, you got to move, you got to move Ooh, to a new it's joint. A wild idea, but it just might work. I'm going to squeeze in one more story. I know we have to pick our favorite, but I'll quickly let you know that a Florida man pushing a stolen lawnmower along railroad tracks has been arrested after a chase. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it feel like a mad here is a situation. <laughs> it feels like a mad a mad libs generator, right? Yes. Uh, cue the, the 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 music. Escambia County Sheriff's Office deputies called to a home to investigate a burglary in which the suspect stole a lawnmower, AirPods, and other items valued at more than five hundred dollars. While deputies were on the scene taking the report, a neighbor said the stolen lawnmower was being pushed down the railroad track right behind the homes. What can you tell us about the scene? Didn't even have a getaway car. Uh, the deputy went to the track, spotted the suspect, and gave chase. The video shows the suspect running away from the deputy, leaving the lawnmower behind. The deputy continues the pursuit, follows the suspect, who's been identified as Marcus Dale, over two fences before catching up with him and putting him in handcuffs. Dale was taken into custody. He now faces two counts of burglary, resisting an officer without violence. A petite theft with two or more prior convictions, which makes it a felony. And so See, off he goes. This is why you need a U-Haul getaway truck, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. I, the U-Haul or machete. I don't know the... why he needs the machete, but he it, it would just add to the Mad Libs to the story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. The U-Haul, though, was being used in the shooting down the road at the come right. and go. Well, maybe so, he was going to yeah. help out his buddy. I, something. I don't know. All right, we have to pick a favorite, you guys. So I'll quickly recap. We have the Port Orange 11-year-old with a false kidnapping hoax. We have the story sent by Jim Avila with the man dunking a woman's head into a vat of a tar-like substance. We have the Florida 79-year-old man who survives an alligator bite. He says, I'm just trying to be healthy and go for a walk and look what happens. We have the Florida man arrested for spraying a woman with a garden hose and following her to her car in an aggressive manner. The Florida man with the fine facial uh, wear who cut off his ankle monitor and was arrested one day after being released from prison. The dog driving the boat. The Florida man trying to open a patrol car to kill the, uh, the other suspect inside who was promptly arrested. And then the man who stole the lawnmower and was caught nearby pushing it down the railroad tracks. I ask you first, Sean Daly, what is your favorite? Uh, great stories. A lot of them kind of convoluted and, you know, kind of uh, difficult to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. But I think the one that's easy to pick is the designated driver. You like the dog in the boat? I think that's hilarious because even the dog knows, like, my owner is irresponsible and I need to get back to shore. I will say, Albert, you have outdone yourself today. This is a wonderful curation of the best of Florida. Uh, I have to choose the guy who was arrested one day after he was released from prison because that's strong. That's strong. I just don't see how you look like that and uh, I don't select you. From it this. is very Albert, Florida. I'll give you what's that. your favorite, Albert? Well, those are just, uh, my two of my options, but I'm, mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I kind of like the matter of fact guy of uh, the alligator bite. He was like, "Yeah, I'm yeah. bleeding. I I was out for to to get like a uh, exercise, and look what happened to me here." But yeah, a lot of people seem to have that reaction. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of Florida are like they they always have quotes of people like, "Yeah, yeah. I just got bitten." Um, I don't Especially know. Especially the, the young guys. The young guys are always like, "Yeah, um, you know, I just want to let you know, you know." I think I might need uh, <laughs> some assistance, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. I might Skin's be dying, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. All right. So we have all chosen a different one. Did we do a poll in the chat, Albert? We did. And, of course, the, the good boy is is winning. The the Florida dog, the, the, the driver. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's a dog involved, I feel like uh, the dog, especially in a good a good story. I don't. I wouldn't share a bad uh, dog story. But uh, Well, the dog seems to be the most responsible individual in this segment. Yeah. For, oh, for sure. Definitely not the 11-year-old who uh, had the fake abduction. No. Yeah, I'm not looking so at, the, at, the, at the chat. A lot of people saying, lighthearted, love the dog in the boat. Uh, mm -hmm. Commentator says, very strong. FFF, Albert, well done. Yeah. Onward, Captain Fido. Yeah. Says Perry I am Jordan the captain Bob. now. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's pretty good. Thanks, everyone, for playing along. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. Y'all come back now, here. Yeah? Bailey, thank you for being with us today. I love when you join us for Friday Fabulous okay. Florida. I'll see everybody on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Tuesday at 1 p.m. at the After Party dot live, the After Party live on our new show, and I can't wait to start it with. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell; you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.